grace, mercy, and peace. These blessings and so many more are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this morning, this evening, is from Psalm 103, a psalm of King David. David says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our God, from whom all blessings flow, dear fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, Thanksgiving is an American holiday, but Christians giving thanks is not an American tradition. A hundred years before the pilgrims and the Patuxet Native Americans gathered around for what was them a feast, a hundred years before that, a relatively famous Lutheran pastor said, we cannot give God anything for everything is already his. All we have comes from him. We can only give him praise, thanks, and honor. And 1,500 years before Martin Luther wrote those words, King David wrote the words of our text. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. And 400 years before David sang the words of that psalm, God's Old Testament people had no less than four to five different festivals to give thanks Our theme this evening is, Praise the Lord, O My Soul, and we'll consider two thoughts. First of all, praise the Lord, O My Soul, and forget not what he has done. In the second verse, in the first verse of our psalm, David says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. And right in that that second phrase, David asks of us the impossible All my inmost being, praise his holy name. All of me, no selfishness, no self-centeredness, no distractions. And we find that so impossible. And yet, that is what David encourages us to do, is to thank God with all our inmost being. Martin Luther, in his own brutally honest and more than a little sarcastic way, said this of mankind. He said, animals show thanks better than men because pigs will clamor after the farmer begging for feed and a dog will sit at the foot of his master hoping for some morsel of food. But us, mankind, we expect the food, we get the food and we feel we deserve the thanks for earning the food and there's very little clamor of thanks. It should not surprise us. Because so often our thanks, our thanks is tempered by if-onlys. God, thank you for everything you've done for me this past year, but if only you would have done this. Thank you, God, but if only I felt just a little bit better. Thank you, God, for the roof over my head and the paycheck, but if only, if only it wasn't a nicer roof and if only that paycheck wasn't just a little bigger. But the if-onlys of our thanks can be traced way back through the pages of Scripture. The first if-onlys were, were uttered by Adam and Eve. Thank you, God, for giving us paradise, perfection. Thank you for giving us a, a perfect vocation, Thank you for giving us a perfect marriage, but but if only we could be more like you, and then we'll eat of that fruit to see what will happen. Perhaps the the saddest litany of if-onlys is found in the book of Exodus from the children of Israel, where they said, God, if only we could be freed from the heavy hand of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And God heard their cry, 
and he delivered them from the Egyptians. And they said, thank you, God. And they were grateful for that until, until they saw the Red Sea in front of them and the Egyptian army behind them. And then they said what? In the book of Exodus, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. So what did God do? Gave them manna and quail. Gave them water from a rock. And their response? Well, they thanked God until, until things didn't go the way they wanted. And then they again followed up with, if only. In our text, David says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Was he thinking of the Israelites, who over and over again forgot all of God's benefits? Perhaps he was, but do you see what David says and who he addresses? Praise the Lord, O my soul. David was talking to himself. David knew better than anyone all of the blessings that God had given him. The blessing of music, the gift of music, being anointed as king, victory over Goliath, victory over enemy after enemy, all of those blessings, and yet David also knew firsthand, better than anyone else, how quickly he forgot those blessings when he looked at another man's wife. He quickly forgot who was responsible for his victories when he decided to find confidence and comfort in the number of his own military and conducted a census of his own army. Can you think of Philistines and Goliaths from whom God has rescued you? Can you recognize the blessings that you have at God's hand? David says, he heals all your diseases. So many of us have so many medical crises and health challenges from which God has delivered us or those we love. And all of us, all of us tonight, have tragedies from which God has prevented us from ever experiencing, tragedies that we will never know. Yet David, in our text, directs his greatest thanks not to military victories, not to his comfortable home, his food-laden table, the blessings of all of his children. David says, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of your sins. David realized that even greater than the importance of remembering the source of all his physical blessings was remembering the source of his forgiveness. How many sins weigh heavily on King David as he wrote this psalm? What sin or sin was he thinking of? For us, that question is somewhat irrelevant. The question for you and me tonight is, what sin weighs heavily on your conscience? What sin robs you of sleep? What sin has caused you so much shame, public or private? And then find comfort in the words of this psalm, in one little word of this psalm, where David says, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of your sins. All of the sins you remember, all of the sins that you have put in your past, all of the sins you don't even realize that you have committed. Forget not all his benefits and all his forgiveness. God says you don't have to enumerate all of those sins. You don't have to worry about the ones you don't remember because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. In the same psalm, David says, God does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. 
Every time I am in this church, I hear such a terrifying diagnosis. So often, in the words of a confession, where I admit that I am by nature sinful and unclean, so often, in the words from this pulpit, that convict me of a sin that I think I buried in my past, So often when I kneel at a table that is far more spiritually satisfying, I am reminded that not only do I hear that diagnosis, but I also hear such a positive prognosis. Go in peace, your sins are forgiven, all of your sins. In the words of an absolution from one of my shepherds, in pointing me to God's promises, that no matter how awful and no matter how loud my conscience, my future is certain because of my Savior. Fear and praise the Lord, O my soul. Forget not what he has done, but then also forget not all he will do. Thanksgiving usually is when we look back at all of those blessings from the past year. Thank you, God, for this and this and this. But look at the words of our text. David says, Praise the Lord, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, redeems your life, crowns you with love, satisfies your desires, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. If you appreciate English grammar, what do you notice? Not one of those verbs is past tense. But they talk about blessings that God still gives us and promises that he will give us. Forget not all of his benefits in the future? How can you possibly forget what you don't have? It's pretty simple. By forgetting what God has promised will happen. What confidence and comfort is ours in these future promises of God? Forget not all of his promised benefits. And yet so often we do just that. What are those benefits that we forget? God's promise. God's promise that if he could calm storms on the Sea of Galilee... He will continue to calm the storms in your life. Promises that every time you set foot in this house or invite God into your house, he will, through his word, lead you to the quiet and green pastures of his promises. God's promise that no matter what anxiety you face, you can cast all of your cares upon him. God's promise that there is no disease that he cannot cure and that perhaps God's healing hand will come ultimately when he sends his angels to carry you to heaven. God's promise that if he loved you enough to send his son to die for you, then he can make everything else work out for your good. God's promise that if he caused his son to suffer the agony of hell itself so that you could have a home in his mansion in heaven, then you can be confident that God will give you everything else you need until you see your Savior in that mansion in heaven. The certainty of God's promises never depend on the length of your Thanksgiving thank you list in 2019. And when you compare this year's thank you list to last year's or look ahead to next year's, the length of that list doesn't determine the breadth of God's love for you. That is certain for you in Jesus. The certainty that we find in our thanksgiving is found not in what I remember to give God thanks for, but rather in what God has done for me in Christ. 
So it's in God's hand that we find our confidence. Confidence that as he leads you down a path that you can see so clearly, or at times the path where you cannot even understand what is in front of you, God's love for you has not changed. David in our psalm says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. So great is his love. We give thanks for that great love. May God continue to bless our thanksgiving. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God